Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today, we are discussing Tarleton's doctoral program in criminal justice, and I am joined by Abigail Horsley, who serves as program manager, and we are excited to share our presentation with you. As Abigail is going through the presentation, if you do have questions, please go ahead and submit those using the Q&A box or the chat box, and we will handle those at the end. So at this time, I will just turn things over to Abigail. Hello all, I'm pleased for all of you to join us today. So I am Abigail Horsley. I'm currently the program manager for the PhD in criminal justice. Currently the doctoral programming here at Texas and normally uh, in the US generally, we focus rather on um, future academics, um, or sorry, we focus on the futures of academics rather than just CJ practitioners. Um, our program kind of prepares students to have a growing opportunities and complexities of criminal justice systems. Um, so with that, the analytical thinking, the critical thinking, and then more so of the leadership skills. Uh, we do offer kind of a unique content and delivery. Um, we offer our classes mostly for those um, CJ practitioners. So we offer classes only on Saturdays. So you're not here during the nights. You're able just to donate one Saturday, you know, for that week. <clears throat> our focus is really theory and practice and with a little bit of statistics as well. And so we want to make sure that the students are getting hand-on learning experiences as well. Um, and so with that delivery, we do a cohort-based model and we have about 10 students per each year um, within the cohorts. So the degree plan has recently changed. This is the new year that we're implementing. We have about 52 credits rather than um, a lot of other schools that have about 60 or above. Your phase one will be completing the core requirements with a GPA of a 3.45. So that's gonna be 43 hours worth of basic coursework to get you to that doctoral level. Phase two is preparing for your preliminary exams, otherwise known as comprehensive exams. Those are worth one credit and that would be one semester worth. And then phase three obviously is going to be your dissertation research, which can be up to nine hours. So this is where you're gonna get with your committee and your professors who have been working with you side by side during phase one and two and starting that research um, and completing your research while defending that so you could become finally a doctor. The timeline for completion is still four years, two courses um, for your first year in the spring, summer, and fall, two courses for the next year, year one and year two are getting those coursework out of the way, as well as year three is where you're going to start finishing those coursework, but working towards those comprehensive exams, and then your dissertation will start leading you in with those final semesters of just being able to focus on those. Currently, our application package is a personal statement, just something for us to get you get to know you. Um, we are currently waiving the GRE scores this year, so there is still time to apply. We, uh, we require three letters of recommendation, a our professional resume, and then obviously a thesis or a writing sample. If you didn't have a thesis in your master's, we would just prefer something like a capstone, anything that can prove your writing skills and then as well as an interview with our PhD admission committee. So that way they get to know you, you get to discuss, you know, what makes you, um, what would make you flourish in the program, why you're interested in our program, um, as well as getting that networks already with those admission staff. So admission standards, this is just something also for grad studies um, within the higher education realm. So official transcripts for undergrad and master level of coursework, including the conferral of a master's degree in criminal justice or something closely related. Um, your master's should have that thesis or something of a writing product. So capstone papers, if you didn't do the thesis, a professional research paper, um, as well as the minimum 3.3 GPA um, for all your master level coursework. 
So priority application um, deadline has already passed, which was February 1st, but we are doing a final application deadline of May 1st. So if you submit an application um, before May 1st, you still have time to complete all of those requirements that I previously had mentioned um, before the end of that month. So if you wanted to continue in the fall, you would have that time. Um, it would change for next year if you're looking to be admitted for fall of 24. Those dates would just stay the same, but it would just be, uh, excuse me, 25. Those dates would just move to 25 rather than 24. And then here's my contact information, um, my phone number. If you call me, I'm very bad at answering the phone. So try to shoot me an email. If I didn't get back to you via phone, I'm always on it. Um, my email is cjphd at tarleton.edu. Um, quick, easy. I can get my answers for you pretty quickly that way. If I don't know the answer, I'll definitely have somebody reach out to you that does. Thank you so much, Abigail. And to our live audience members, if you do have questions, please go ahead and uh, submit those. You can use the Q&A box or the chat box and we'll have Abigail answer those for you. I did have a few questions of my own, Abigail. And so I want to just specify when exactly can people enroll in this program? What, what is the time frame? So you can well, enroll or be admitted. When, when, when is it possible to start, I guess is a better way yeah. to ask that. Um, so it's possible to start as soon as you have that committee admission and once the committee accepts you. Um, we do only fall admissions, so you would be admitted that following spring or that previous spring, and then we would welcome you in that fall. So you'd have orientation. Um, you would be registered before the orientation. I would reach out to you and tell you what to register for, so that way you would be prepared for your first day. Um, and we normally, after your admission, um, interview, you would know within a few days after that uh, interview whether or not you would be a great candidate or, you know, not. Okay. So if they miss one fall, then the next opportunity to mm -hmm. start would be the following. Be the fall. next fall, okay. yes. You you mentioned a cohort uh, mm -hmm. model where everyone's starting together. Are they all taking the same classes at the same time for the whole program? Yeah, so once you start in a cohort, you would be taking the same exact classes with the same group of people that you started with. Um, I know there's special, special circumstances on that, but generally speaking, once you start, you finish together. Dissertation may take different hours, whether you need those full nine hours or you need six of them. Um, but generally speaking, yes, you're going to start with the same group and finish with the same group. And you mentioned that classes are only on Saturday. So what does a yes. Saturday a typical Saturday look like? Yeah. For so a typical Saturday is going to start at, um, I believe it's 9 a.m. now. I think they moved it from the 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Saturday until about noon. And then you get an hour lunch break and you'll start from one to four again with your second class because you're only doing two classes. So they're a little bit longer periods, but you are, you know, hands on with that professor in the classroom and spending your day with them getting all that knowledge. And so it's two two classes a term for mm -hmm. the duration of of your coursework. Yes. Okay, that's very yeah. manageable. That's very manageable. Um, I wanted to ask you about the interview process. What does that look like? You said it's with the admissions committee. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're able to share how many are on that committee and how long the interview is, what what the format of it is? Is it in person? Is it virtual? So we do offer in-person interviews or via Zoom. We typically do via Zoom because some of the faculty are still based out of Stephenville, and this is only based out of Fort Worth. Um, so you would only have classes on the Fort Worth campus. And so it would just depend on, you know, if you're going to be able to come in or we'll just do it via Zoom if that makes it better, if you're out of state or anything like that. Um, 
you would meet with three of the committee members. Sometimes it's just different faculty members who teach the PhD classes. Normally it's at least the department head for sure. Um, they'll grade you, you know, they'll talk you through your transcripts to ensure that you, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll talk you through your transcripts to make sure that you're, you've met like a, you've taken a statistics class, you've, you know, completed something worth that you can do research and you have the writing skills. Um, do you have background in criminal justice? Is your previous master's degree in something related to criminal justice? So they get to know you firsthand. You get to know what they're kind of about. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so you'll just be able to kind of talk through with them. And then this gives you a little bit more of an insight on the faculty side of the program as well. Yeah, thank you for that. <clears throat> well, you raise an important point because for students who are enrolled in this program, they do need to be mm -hmm. in a position to physically get to Fort Worth on Saturdays and be able to spend spend the day with us. So um, that's a that's an important consideration for people. So thank you for that. Okay, you also mentioned recommendation letters. Where <clears throat> are there any suggestions or advice on who should be writing those? Where they come from? Is there a preference for the type of recommendation letter? I would say we definitely look for at least one to two professors and maybe one to two like supervisors. Um, since we are looking at CJ practitioners, so somebody who's actively in the workforce, whether that's a police officer, higher up in the police systems, uh, correctional officers, we do like to see something from maybe their, you know, supervisor just to kind of give a background of not just as academics, but how are they in the real world too? Yes. And so we at least, we require the three. It, it doesn't hurt, you know, if you send in four or something like that, all, all is welcomed and we will go through all of them. Okay. We've got some audience questions here. Okay. Um, and someone's asking how long after they've received a master's can they apply for the doctoral program? And it's actually... I would imagine right away, as long as that master's degree has been conferred, <clears throat> it would be, and they've got a, a bachelor's from, from an accredited institution, yeah. they are in a position to qualify for the program. Yeah, so currently this spring, we've had a few students who are finishing up their master's this spring, and they're welcomed in this fall as well. So you could be actively, you know, in your graduating semester, and still be able to be admitted pending we received that you know official what um transcript that shows yeah. that you were conferred with a master's degree in something that that criminal justice related field yes yes well and thank you for that because that's mm -hmm. important it's similar to what happens on the master's side where you might mm -hmm. have someone who's graduating uh, with their bachelor's in the summer and they start grad school right away in mm -hmm. the fall and so um, all we would need is that transcript uh, providing proof that that bachelor's degree was conferred. So thank you for that. And then someone's asking, can you enter the doctoral program without taking a thesis course? So if you haven't previously taken one through your master's, if that is what you're referring to, then we would accept, you know, that professional paper or a research paper, something that you've worked kind of hand in hand with a professor if your master's didn't have a thesis. Now for the doctoral program, no matter what, you're going to have to take a thesis. You're going to have to do a thesis. Um, but if you're referring just for the master's, it's not required, but we do want something of a professional, you know, academic paper. So if someone were submitting something that's not a master's thesis as their writing sample, does it need to be a certain length? Or are there any minimum requirements for that? We don't necessarily have any minimum requirements on it. Um, we really just look for that writing sample. So if it's something that you, you know, had a capstone rather than, um, I know most of the time, if you don't have thesis, you have a capstone. So if it's something from your capstone class that you had to write about, just as long as it's within that master's level, it's not something from the undergrad term. Okay. Someone's asking how long will the GRE scores be waived as an admissions requirement? Cause they probably wouldn't start until <laughs> fall of 25 at the earliest. I don't think we have a full answer whether or not they're going to be waived right now. 
Um, but we are looking to potentially continue that on into the next year. Um, but I mean, if you shoot me an email, I'm more than gladly to get with the committee at any time to kind of talk about that because they would also be finalizing that too, besides just with grad studies. All right. Um, and then uh, there's a question here about the recommendation letter. So you mentioned supervisors <laughs> and some academic uh, references to if someone's been away from school for a while what what advice do you have there for them in terms of recommendation letters that's hard yeah um I would say then probably I mean if it has to be another supervisor or somebody kind of that knows you well um then we could probably work with that if it's not necessarily academics um we've you know, currently have students who haven't been in school for like 10 to 15 years. And I'm like, that's great. Do you have, you know, do you have another previous boss if you've changed jobs? Somebody who might, you know, be able to uh, speak on your behalf. That's totally okay. It doesn't necessarily have to be academics um, if you've taken a break through those, but it doesn't hurt if you're coming straight from your master's into a doctoral program. Would, would a colleague's recommendation be acceptable you think I would think so um hopefully they would give you a glowing review kind of thing so I would I would say we could work with something like that as well if you have a strong you know writing samples and strong interview um not everything's going to be based off of the resume the sample the writing samples it's also based off of a lot of that interview and whether or not are you a good fit for the program as well um, what can you bring to the program too? Yes. So you, a large part of your job is assuring people through this admissions process. So once they have, they are complete, meaning they've submitted everything that you've asked them to, the writing sample, their transcripts, the personal statement, that type of thing. Then what happens? Their interview is scheduled yeah, so after we, I've, I work hand in hand with the grad admissions team, after we've received all of your information, I'll go meet with the committee, we'll all send them all of your information, I'll schedule the appointment, whether that's in person or Zoom, to have the interview, um, you'll meet with them. After your interview, we have maybe a week, week or two to kind of turn around to see, you know, the admission process, but once you've been admitted, I'll reach out, grad studies reaches out, we tell you, these are what you need to do. This is how you enroll, whether or not you might need leveling courses. If you don't have like a master statistics class or something, um, we would get you in the leveling courses into the summer. So that way you could at least continue in the fall and you're not set behind a whole nother year. Um, and so I would be your kind of go-to person for that, you know, end of May to beginning of August. And then you would get with us for orientation. I would send something out. And then you would start classes like August 17th. <laughs> so it's a it's a pretty, it's a, not a long process. We try to do this pretty quick for a lot of people because we know that they're working, they're actively doing something. Um, and so we want to get them kind of set in stone about what's going to happen with their future. Mm -hmm. So uh, you had mentioned leveling. Um, yeah. What What have you seen in terms of what someone might be asked to do? And for those who do not know level, Explain what leveling means. Yeah, so leveling courses are kind of a requirement if you don't have enough in something for your master's. Um, and so say you don't have a degree, you're not getting a degree in necessarily criminal justice, maybe something similar, but you didn't take a master's level statistics course because we require a master level statistics course or a master level research course. Well, we could still look at your application and see that you're a great fit, but we may require you to take a master level, so not a doctoral level, but a master's level of statistics class over the summer or a research level class over the summer to maybe help improve those writing skills um, because you didn't have a writing class in your master's. And so we would work kind of hand in hand with you and a specific professor and get you in that leveling course where if you completed it with at least an I think it's a B or higher right now, um, then you would be able to, you know, maintain your admission status for that fall. 
Now, if you are admitted unconditionally, uh, unconditionally, are unconditionally. So if you have that leveling course, but you decide you want to take a break and you're like, I will work on it through like the fall or that next spring, we can always push your admission date to that next fall. So if you were coming in this fall and you needed a leveling course, but you didn't want to take it yet, then we would just be able to push you off until that next fall. Um, you may have to do another committee interview just to ensure that everything is on track, that you did take the courses, and then you would be able to be admitted. Okay. Is there any information you can tell us about the orientation? Yeah. So orientation is kind of a newer thing that we're doing. This is only like the second year we're going to have a big orientation. So you come in, I'll have a bunch of swag for everybody, um, nice little stuffs to give out. You'll meet with a lot of the faculty members as well. We walk you through the whole campus um, in Fort Worth. So you get to see the building where everything is, where like I'm located, where your faculty members will be located, classrooms, libraries, cafe, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, as well as we kind of give another rundown of the program, so kind of what you saw today, but just in a little bit more in depth, as well as you'll get to talk to the faculty members there, you'll get to meet them, the ones that you didn't meet on the committee um, panel, as well as kind of like what expectations are going to look like in the future, funding wise, those kinds of things. So we'll get into the nitty gritty more at that orientation. Fantastic. Has a date been set yet for that? Yes, I believe that is going to be August 8th. I think okay. that's the I think that's the Thursday. Um, okay. so August 8th. So we look about two weeks before school because we know everybody's working um, and we want to have an ample you know time to make sure that everybody can come together. We get everything. Um, we have pizza, we have drinks kind of stuff. So we kind of treat them out for their first time at Tarleton. Yeah, well, rightfully so. <laughs> and would that be an evening event? We're looking for the day since we do have tours coming. Um, we have some people coming from Stephenville. So we do look for the day. Um, so that way we can ensure that they get all of their questions answered that day of, and that way they're ready for classes in that next two weeks. Thank you. For those who are planners, they will appreciate that information. So thank you so much. Well, Abigail, I'm not seeing any further questions from our live audience members. Are there any final words to the program prospective students before we close for today? What would you say is uh, uh, a main selling point of the of the program? Why should someone consider joining us here at Tarleton State University for this doctoral program in criminal justice? I'd make a joke about all the swag that you get, all the free things that we give you. Um, but I would definitely say that Tarleton has been a home for sure. Um, and when I look at the cohorts that we now currently have, it's, it's amazing to see them continuously grow. Um, they have done things that, you know, a lot of them didn't think were going to be possible. And this program's only five years old and we're graduating our first doctoral um, doctor this spring. So we're so excited for them. And so it's just continuously growing and we just, you know, hope and pray that everything, we have more people come. We're so excited. We're always willing to uh, answer those questions for anybody or, you know, just even help out if you, if this is not right for you and we, you know, you decide after your application or interview and you're like, maybe this isn't for me. We can even help you kind of direct maybe somewhere that might be better for you. So it's not always a bad thing. Um, it's always a great thing. And so we always bleed purple. So we have a great time. I promise. Well, and it's good that you mentioned the cohort model again, because that really mm -hmm. is the sweet spot and the key to success. The, your cohort members literally keep you afloat when you think that you really can't go on. And so it is an, an important part and aspect of our, our program and certainly intentional because we know that that type of networking and support is really invaluable. So, yeah. Well, with that, we can end for today. Thank you to our live audience members. This uh, presentation recording will be available to review on demand in the College of Graduate Studies YouTube channel. So if you'd like to go back and review 
what you've heard today, you are able to do so at your convenience. And thank Abigail for uh, the great information today. And her contact information is there if you've got any uh, questions about how to proceed. Uh, certainly feel free to reach out to her. But if you're interested in joining our fall 2024 cohort, as she said, you've still got some time. So we hope you will uh, give us some good consideration in your application. So thanks all. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.